Hello, hello. Ruffled Bricks here with part 6 of this Jet Set Willy speedrunning tutorial. This part will cover the final section of the Any% percent speedrunning route as we scale the unforgiving heights of the East Wall, including the holy hell of the Priest's Hole. Probably the last truly awful room in the game, unless you're particularly skilled at fast-moving pixel-perfect jumps. Once we've had some good news, we'll travel through the only Pink Floyd album cover in the game, an elephant that baffles doctors, and the infamous, but actually quite easy when the game's not broken, Attic. Next, we'll head up to the roof via a crashed aeroplane, and march across the battlements, performing a Quirka Fleeg and taking in the view from the watchtower in the process. Then, we'll unscrew the house's flagpole, and rescue the seemingly not that bothered about being rescued, Esmeralda. We'll then exploit the one major glitch in the run as we warp from the ceiling all the way back down to Ballroom East. And from there, all we need to do is clear the dinner table, head back upstairs, turn the landing light out, and go to bed, with all 83 items in the run accounted for. This part will also contain a fun little rope trick that will ever so slightly speed up your run, and I'll show you whereabouts in the ending you'll need to set your final split. But first, huddle up. It's time for the Beast of the East. Wall. And we are in the East Wall base. So climbing up the East Wall is, um, again, another particularly dangerous section of the game. It's probably the last major uh, dangerous section of the game because uh, again there's a lot of um, scope for instant game overs here by falling off platforms and such so you need to be careful particularly when we get to the priest's hole but let's start with the east wall base first of all you can actually traverse this level pretty quickly so jump right vertical jump and then right jump like that straight away and then left jump left jump and right jump and then you have to wait on that one I'm afraid but right jump after the skull there so you can do all that very quickly um, just by ensuring you get all the right positions in like that it helps to start as far to the left of this platform as possible so if you get your double jump correct from the room below then you will be in a good position to do that. The two main things that you need to worry about there is just um, uh, that first jump over the skull, so from here to here. Um, you've got quite a narrow window for that, as you can see, so try and play it by ear on that one. If, if, if you haven't got to this platform like in the quickest possible time, then I'd say just wait for the skull to go up. And the same with that scroll jump as well. Um, one quick little thing that you can note about this scroll jump here is if you end up on this platform and the scroll is about to get you, you can pop yourself into the right facing mid stride position and you'll be fine. Let's show you a slightly slower cycle of that. So let's say you get up there, but you're a little unsure about your jump. So just wait for the skull to go back up and then jump there and then you can jump left like this and then just position yourself like that the right face in mid stride position and you are good to go this jump onto this platform here we're going to turn this into a turning triple jump so this is going to get you up to halfway up the east wall and it's going to do so in probably the safest possible way for the beginning of the level because watch so here we go turn and jump left and left again and that stops you having to worry about this jump at all because the safe jump on that is automatically built in. Now this enemy here, this yellow stepper, this is a three cycle no matter what. Um, I've not managed to find any quicker way of getting past this enemy. So if anyone knows how to get past him in fewer than three cycles, um, do let me know. But so the first cycle is just gone. Now, the second cycle, when he goes to the right, jump onto this platform here. And the third cycle, when he goes back to the right, here's a little tip for you that a lot of people don't seem to know about. So, a lot of people tend to do this jump like this. So, they do a vertical jump 
and then jump to the left like that. But as you can see, there's not a huge amount of leeway in doing that. So jump up the platforms for cycle one. And jump over to this platform for cycle two. And then for cycle three, when the enemy goes into this alcove, instead of jumping vertically, jump right. And that might sound ludicrous, but the reason you want to do that is because if you jump right into the alcove, then the ceiling here actually stops the trajectory of your jump. And that means you are then in a much quicker position to be able to jump to the left to get into this hole here. So watch. So right jump, now, and there you are. See, it stops you straight like that. Uh, so jump into this left hole here and then do as I've done. Uh, hold right when you get into there and jump. And that will jump you up to this platform. Just keep holding right and jump until you get to here. And do not hold jump any further when you end up on that platform. Otherwise, you'll end up back down here again. So here is the world famous priest's hole. The best timing on this will be a two cycle. But this is pretty hard to do because the first cycle of the priest's head, you will want to get four platforms up. So you want to get from here to here to here and then to here, all before the priest's head starts going back down. And you've got a fairly narrow window to do that. And, and on top of that, this up here is an edge jump and this is also an edge jump between these two platforms here. So you've got to get two edge jumps in, in quite quick succession to be able to do that. Now this is one where you're going to want to use the um, standing jump buttons to do your left jump and your right jump. But even then you are going to have to practice this quite a bit, if only to get the physical configuration of your fingers in, because it is pretty, pretty tough to get all that going all together. Now there are two places here where you can really easily instantly game over. So if you're too far to the left on this jump, then you will overshoot the platform and instant game over on the yellow stepper there. The other place where you're likely to instant game over is this jump to the right here. Because if you do that from the wrong position, then you fall down onto this bit here. And this slope is a slippery one which pushes you to the right. It's a conveyor belt effectively. And no matter how much you hold position on that one, there's no way at all that you can get back from that. You're just gonna have to let go and fall all the way down to the East Ballroom. If for whatever reason you want to do a cycle reset whilst near the bottom, you can do this by dropping down between the two lowest platforms and then jumping up to the right hand platform again. So, so here we go. So jump left, jump right, jump left, jump right like that. So that is your first cycle. As you can see, you basically just need to, when you get up here, just tap like once on the direction button to face the other way and hit your respective jump button to do that. Uh, you can also just learn how to do that with the normal jump button and with the uh, directional buttons, but um, uh, that's, that's, that's quite a lot to ask, I think, for, for that. So that's the simpler way of doing it. What we're going to do next is we're going to wait for the priest to just go below us. And when we do that, we're going to do a turning triple jump from where we're standing to uh, here. So this will jump onto this platform. This is not an edge jump, by the way, so you've actually got a bit more leeway on this one. So jump over to here, and then the turn will get us up to this platform here, and then the right jump will get us over to grab the Bible. And then we are going to jump back to the left-hand side of the level before the priest head comes back up. So jump, two, three, and then jump to the left like that. So here it is all together. So jump left, jump right, jump left, jump right. Mid stride position like that. Wait for the priest head to go down. Left jump, turning, triple jump, right. Grab the Bible, 
if it's there, and then jump to the left of the priest's head. And that is how you two cycle the priest's hole. If you're too late for the fourth jump, there is also a slightly slower but still fairly quick two cycle approach you can take. By jumping right just as the priest's head goes below you, then immediately jumping left twice and popping quickly into the emergency generator to reset the cycle so that you can jump straight across to the Bible and back without issue. So now next thing to do is the emergency generator. Now, as you can see, you very quickly have to avoid falling to your death on this one. So uh, best thing to do with this one is just hold jump and that will get you across to the top of the chimney here. So with the emergency generator, this is a pretty simple level. Just run down the uh, steps. This is a conveyor belt here so you can take your uh, fingers off the movement buttons if you like. This pig's not even going to be an issue to be honest with you. Now next thing we're going to do, we're going to, we're going to go into Dr. Jones will never believe this next and to do that we're actually going to jump from this platform here. So we're not going to go down to the bottom, we're going to jump from this platform here like that and this lands you on this platform here. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to edge jump from this side of the platform up to the trunk because that avoids us having to go around all this conveyor belt nonsense. We're going to hold jump twice as we do the edge jump because the second jump is then going to clip through the elephant's trunk so that we can then drop down and then we're going to jump left when we hit this platform to grab the tusk here. So here we go. Edge jump, clip through, grab the item, and like that. And then jump straight back onto the trunk, like that. And then we are going to go through the body of this elephant here. And this is a very quick sequence of left, right, left, right movements. And the timing that you want for getting past this yellow bat is wait for the bat to touch the bottom of its cycle. So when it hits the bottom, go and that will get you past it fine. And then just start jumping up the platforms, uh, come out the other end of the elephant, and that's how you do it. So let's put that all together. So jump into Dr. Jones, edge jump from the edge and jump again, clip through the trunk, jump up to grab the tusk, jump onto the trunk there, walk up. And if you've timed this well, then the bat will be right at the bottom of its cycle when you hit that last platform there so you can just go straight out like this. One thing to bear in mind though is that depending on the jump that you do back onto the trunk here if you jump too quickly onto the trunk then the yellow bat may not be at the bottom of its cycle when you get to this platform so my advice there would be just wait until it is. It's another one of those speed strats where you can actually go too fast for it if you're not careful but just just be cognizant of um, where the bat is and you'll be fine. So uh, with the attic, you can preemptive jump into this to avoid the gap here and then run to the left of the conveyor belt, run to the end of this platform. This is an edge jump again, so jump twice across and jump over the plant. Walk left, walk to the last square of this conveyor belt and then hold jump twice. And that will get you onto the stairs like that. And we're now going to head right up into Nomen Looney. So this is how I used to do uh, Nomen Looney. So jump up here and then we jump to this platform here and then we just wait for the moon to go down and the green radar to go to the left and then jump there, jump again and jump to this blue platform over here and drop down. So that's kind of the safe strat for this room. For ages, I assumed this could only be done as a two cycle, but you can actually do all that in one cycle. Here is how you one cycle Nomen Looney. So from the top, go in and then jump when you get to about here. And that will get you onto the blue platform. And then that's your first jump. Your second jump will then get you up to this platform here. And the moment you hit your head on this ceiling here, turn left and jump straight onto this platform. Then walk about 
a square and a half along this platform and then turn right and jump once, twice, three times and four times. And then what will happen as a result of that is you will actually avoid both the moon and the radar both in one go without having to do all that waiting. So here it is in action. So jump up, jump onto the platform, jump again, left jump, and then jump once, twice, three times, four times. And you land on the blue platform and fall down. And that is how you one cycle, nom and loony, no waiting required whatsoever. Walk right into on the roof. If this one, just hold right, jump when you get to the bottom of the cliff there and then jump when you get to the end of the conveyor belt there to get the item. This room looks a lot tougher than it actually is um, because of the way that the rope and the rabbit cycles intersect. But if you literally just go for it, if you just hold right, jump here and land on this platform and that will stop you from landing on the rope. And you'll also be far enough to the left so that the rabbit doesn't hit you. So you can then follow them quite close behind and just jump at the end of the conveyor belt to get the item. And then jump onto the rope and jump up to the top like this. If you're sitting there thinking, that's all well and good bricks, but how can I make it the tiniest bit quicker? Then here is a nice little trick with the rope that you can exploit. In both the beach and on the roof, the ropes are set so that you can only climb a certain height up them. But if you climb to that height and wait for the rope to reach full swing in either direction, you can actually jump into the ceiling, which will warp you down to the floor of the room. So you can instead do on the roof by jumping onto the rope, climbing to the top, waiting for it to swing to the right, then warping through the ceiling, jumping over the bunny as you reach the end of the conveyor belt, grabbing the sword and completing the rest of the room as per normal. As well as looking cooler, this strat actually saves you around half a second because the warp through the ceiling resets the rope cycle, moving it slightly ahead of where it would be if you did the room normally. So therefore you can actually get up the wall quicker. That said, you do need to be careful not to jump off the rope too early so that you don't undershoot the ceiling and fall to your death. But you do have a few frames leeway to pull this trick off. My visual cue for the warp is to watch the top of Willy's head and then just after it goes two pixels upwards, jump, as this should then achieve the trick safely. Up on the battlements, this is a room where you have to get moving pretty quickly because there is an arrow coming straight towards you, like so. So what we're going to do is we're going to get past this green knight and that arrow both in one jump to begin with. So here we go, run to the right and jump and that clears both of them. Now stand about here on this second square of this battlement and wait for the red knight to get near the top of his cycle. And then when he is near the top, jump onto the conveyor belt. And then you see that gets you into the optimum position at the other end of the conveyor belt so that you can jump over the yellow knight like that. If you don't manage this timing and end up needing to wing it, then just wait for the yellow knight to reach the bottom of their cycle. And if you jump then, you should clear them without issue. Also, remember that the conveyor belt pushes you to the left, so you may be able to jump back if you get the timing on the yellow knight wrong. And you can also stand still at the end of the conveyor belt in the mid stride position if you time it correctly. So there are a few fail safes available here. And then this last one, just jump straight over it when it passes beneath you like that. Uh, as I say, it's pretty quick this last one, so you want to try and get as close to the edge of this platform as you can, which is of course the mid-stride position, um, and then just jump the moment you get a free moment to do so. So here it is all together, so jump towards the end of that platform like that, and then jump again on that middle square over the red knight, along the conveyor belt, over the yellow knight, 
up the edge like that, jump over, and then jump up and grab the helmet as you go into, we must perform a quirker fleek. You don't need to worry about that green bird when you do that jump. As you can see, the position we jumped from was absolutely fine. We're now going to jump onto this rope and climb all the way up to the top of the rope, which will take us into the watchtower. And the way we're going to do this is um, we're going to hold left when we're on this rope and this will push us all the way up to the top so from this jump here so just jump straight across and and hold jump to the left for three jumps the moment you get into the watchtower um, and that will get you up here and up onto this platform just narrowly missing the yellow bird there and then grabbing the first item like so. In order to ensure that second jump doesn't hit the yellow bird, then you need to have done Quirker Fleek as quickly as I did it, really. Like, you need to have just jumped straight onto the rope and pressed left from the off and gone straight up it. Because that seems to guarantee the perfect timing for that. I've tried that jump when the rope has just been slightly off from the position it's in there. Sometimes, for whatever reason, that just makes you crash into the yellow bird. I haven't quite figured out the exact physics behind it, but that timing that I did in Quirker Fleek, that is pretty much perfect for that. So let's just show you that timing again. So jump up, grab the helmet, and then straight up jump across to the rope and hold left and hold jump for one, two, three, and grab the item. Now from here, we're going to jump back to the right of this plant. We then need to walk for about a square to two squares to the right on this platform and jump again. And this will get us over the pink flower. And we're then going to jump to grab this apple. So we go one and two. And then jump up to grab the apple. The position for jumping to grab the apples from these plants is about a square back from the plant in question. Because that will ensure that you get over it rather than jumping into it. And also ensure that you do get the item during that jump as well. And then when the bird goes past, jump up to get the last two. Jump back as quickly as you can. Now you are going to have to edge to the right hand side of this platform here to be able to get this jump back down here. And be really careful on that because if you fall off to the side then you will instant game over um, on the platform in Quirker Fleek below. But if you've got this quickly enough, we should then be able to move back and jump to the left like that to get to the left of the plant without hitting the flower or the bird. And then just drop down into. We must perform a quirker fleek again. So jump to grab the helmet, jump onto the rope, hold left, then jump one, two, three. Grab the apple, jump back over the plant, walk for a bit, jump over the pink flower, jump and grab the apple, move back a bit, wait for the bird to pass, jump up one, two, jump to the left from the edge there, and then jump just as the flower is going to touch that plant there, drop down, press uh, right, and then press left, and fall onto the rope. And move to the bottom of the rope when you land in Quirker Fleek because if you are there then the arrow will sail right over your head like that and then just jump to the right to get onto this platform. Jump up to grab this helmet and again you will land safely in I'm sure I've seen this before which is basically just a remixed version of Up on the Battlements. This is also easier than Up on the Battlements because um, although it looks a bit more hectic the um, the, there's no conveyor belt to worry about here. So what you need to do here is um, simple walk to the edge of this platform, wait for the yellow knight to go down, walk to the edge of this one, wait for the arrow to pass overhead, jump, wait for the blue knight to go down. It should actually be going down the moment that you get to that platform there. But uh, if not, you may need to wait just for a second and then just jump over the green knight, which is very slow and jump and grab the helmet and land in Rescue Esmeralda. 
So here's how to do all that in one go. So jump with the helmet, walk to the edge of the platform, jump over the yellow knight when it goes down, wait for the arrow to go past, jump, then jump over the blue knight and jump about a square back over the green knight and uh, jump up to grab the helmet and into Rescue Esmeralda. And then the thing with this jump to grab this helmet here is uh, when you jump and grab it, then just jump straight again when you get into this room and this will get you over the first knight in Rescue Esmeralda. Jump over the second one, which is nowhere to be found, and jump over this hole here, up the stairs, and into on top of the house. Drop down, jump across the battlements like that. Grab the end of the flagpole, and then you can jump up to this step from here, jump up, and jump up again. Uh, now, we're going to get these two items here. And we are then going to jump into the ceiling to the right here. Because this transports you from this room, which is the top of the map, all the way down to Ballroom East which is at the bottom of the map. And this is the quickest way to route everything in this run. Because if you didn't do that, then you'd have to go all the way around uh, via emergency generator again. So here we go. So jump up, grab the two bars, jump up, and here you are in the floor of Ballroom East. Now you're gonna to have to jump to get out of this floor. And to do that, basically all you need to do is wait until the pink bird here is directly above Willy and then you'll jump safely to the left like that so get past these skulls as quickly as you can shouldn't take too long now ballroom west with this ballroom table here the quickest way to get all of the items and then get to the left hand side of the table is as follows so grab one, two, three, four, five items. Walk back and then once the rabbit was in about that position, about that distance away from you, then jump to the left onto the table, walk to the left, jump over the rabbit and then if you've missed any of the items and you will, you'll miss at least one of them if not both. Walk right through the table and grab those last two items. And the skull will be out of the way if you do it via that timing. So wait for the skull to go up, walk left, and then walk left and go all the way up the stairs because you have now got all of the items from the mansion apart from one. So we're going to go up to the top landing, just a very little shortcut here to quickly get onto that staircase here. If you jump between the words first and landing, so if you jump in the space here, then and that gives you a nice little diagonal shortcut up the stairs. Now walk right into the bathroom, jump up onto this platform, go up the stairs and jump left and jump over the green balls like this. And we're going to grab this item here by jumping over this gap and then the Position you want to jump here because you can get this jump in straight away, but you want to do this when Willy is above the T in top landing. Because if you do that, you will jump low enough that the razor here won't get you. But if you do that any further to the left than that, then you may get hit. So here we go. Jump. And there you are. You see, very narrowly missed the razor there. But then what you do is just jump up to the left like that to grab the last item, walk to the right and drop down and walk to the left. The reason we collect this item at the end of the run rather than the beginning is because by this stage we only have one life left rather than eight. And because of this it will be quicker by about a second as the distance you travel is pretty much equal in both scenarios. It's also a little bit safer as this timing enables you to jump over the green balls in the bathroom which I feel is a bit easier than having to quickly jump over the Swiss Army knife if you do it the other way. Once you've collected that last item, head into the master bedroom to touch the side of Willy's bed. And here is the ending from my current Any% percent PB to show you where you call time on your splits.
Yep, time is called when Willy falls into the toilet and spews up for the rest of eternity. Happy now? And that's it. That is the quickest known route through Willy's mansion in any percent mode. If you've managed to successfully implement every single strategy in this run, then I salute you. And if you've managed to improve upon absolutely any of these strats, then for heaven's sake, drop me a comment below the video. Failing that, I will also accept likes, feedback or subscriptions, as well as your undying viewership of my Twitch channel, where speedruns go to live or die. There is one more part of this tutorial in the post, and in part 7 we will be going through how to adapt the strats in this tutorial for the other two main Jet Set Willy speedrunning categories. The mostly glitch-free Warpless percent, and the one mistake and you're gone, Max Lives percent. That part will cover a few alternative routes around the mansion, including how to do all the death warp rooms without losing lives which you'll need to know when you start learning how to speedrun the game, regardless of category. So be sure to check it out. This video is over.